Hello and welcome. We are from Los Angeles City Planning. I am Betty Dong, GIS Chief. Today we have City Planner Brittany Arsenal and GIS Specialist Laura Vargas presenting. The City of Los Angeles is such a large city at 473 square miles and unique in its spread and sprawl for an urban setting ranging from the Venice Canals to the San Fernando Valley to Griffith Park and Hollywood and down to the Port of Los Angeles. It's so large that in order to update our general plan land use in compliance with California state law, we've broken up the city into 35 smaller community plan areas to update the land use and zoning through the community plan update program. The new GIS tools we're presenting today has enhanced not only the efficiency of performing the community plan update, but also improved the transparency of data and improved relations between the planners and the GIS section. Prior to this web app, the planners had to request individual maps to be marked up and didn't get to see all the other data layers available. This led to frustrations and misunderstandings. By providing all the data to the planners, the GIS is showing a good faith in sharing information and making the planners more empowered. Today, we will share how the community plan update was done in the past and how Web App Builder has enhanced our workflow for the present. Also, what we have planned for future developments using the Software Developers Kit. Next, I'd like to introduce Brittany Arsenault. Thank you, Betty. Hi, I'm Brittany Arsenault, and I'm so excited to join you today to discuss how we use GIS tools to support the work in community planning. As many of you know, GIS offers us as planners a world of possibility when it comes to analysis and research. In the presentation, we are going to talk specifically about how our team customize ArcGIS Online tools to respond to our growing work program. The department has been tasked with updating the zoning and land use for all 35 community plan areas within a nine-year time period. The size of a community plan area is comparable to a small U.S. American city. As you can see on this map, the two plan areas shown downtown in Boyle Heights encompass over 8,000 acres. In addition to the zoning updates, the department is simultaneously updating and restructuring the City of Los Angeles zoning code. There is a staff of about four people assigned to each community plan. And in addition to updating the specific zoning, they're also working on developing new zoning tools to respond to community feedback. So looking at applying those new tools to over 15,000 parcels per community plan area. These efforts launched in 2014, and at that time, only one plan was being updated. Now we have about 15 active plans with a staff of over 30 planners. When we began that first plan in 2014, we realized that the analysis and mapping needs would be duplicated and also needed for every subsequent plan. We decided to document the GIS layers and analyses that the planners needed for that first plan and create a guide to consolidate and systematize the common data requests into a platform that could be accessible by those subsequent community planning teams. At the end of the day, we realized if we could structure the databases in a way that allowed planners to quickly select some or export CSV files, we could significantly reduce the amount of time that it took to access information. We transitioned from a system where planners would submit requests and wait for that information to be processed and analyzed and sent back to them to a system where planners were trained and empowered to immediately access the information they needed. As part of the community plan updates, we use GIS data at five key points throughout the update process. The first is understanding the community plan area, looking at features such as the existing building heights, existing uses on the ground, local and federal historic resources, and existing transit infrastructure. 
The second piece is when planners are developing policy and zoning concepts. LA is a city of overlays. Our zoning is very complex and the various regulations are typically contained in separate layers. We as planners need to quickly identify the spatial relationship between the base zoning, new state housing laws, and citywide overlays. The next key point is mapping the proposed zoning and land use. We need to do this in a way that can be easily understood and stored by our GIS staff. And we need to make sure that we can continually make modifications to the proposed zoning and general plan recommendations as we conduct our community outreach and get feedback from our community partners. The fourth point is analyzing environmental impacts. In the state of California, community plans are required to conduct an environmental impact report to analyze the potential effects of the proposed plan. For this analysis, we look at data points such as floodplains, sensitive habitats, and historic resources, and work closely with EIR and transportation consultants to really understand how the potential growth could result in different environmental effects. The last step of the community planning process is presenting the recommendations to the public and decision makers. The internal work that we do to map and draft concepts can be translated to public facing platforms such as Story Maps and ArcGIS Urban. I'd like to briefly demonstrate two examples of how the community planning app has improved our process. This slide shows a change matrix and a sub area map. In previous community plan updates, planners would use paper maps and a marker to draw sub areas and highlight what areas were being rezoned. They would then assign a number to these areas to show on a corresponding spreadsheet what the specific zone changes were. The way that this information was shared and updated was drawing on a map, taking it over to GIS staff, having them update the map, and then subsequently planners updating a spreadsheet. Planners would then publish this to the community members so they could reference both the spreadsheet and the map side by side. Now with the community planning app, planners can directly input zoning changes through the ArcGIS Online platform. So the database is updated in real time. Then subsequently, planners can update the story map so that decision makers and community partners can click on the map and understand the proposed changes at the parcel level. Thank you so much for joining this presentation. I'd now like to pass it over to Laura to provide you some more specific examples of how the community planning app is used. Thank you, Brittany. Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Vargas. I help design and build the community planning app, and I will be taking you on a little tour of its various widgets and uses. The community planning app is intended to improve the information planners have available in order to inform policy recommendations. It is an interactive spatial tool that can perform light analysis that would otherwise require GIS staff resources. This has allowed GIS staff to focus on heavier analysis, map production, and data organization. This tool has also allowed community planning staff to visualize the data and see how different data sets interact. This eliminates the needs to go between multiple resources, such as various other department resources, static maps, and spreadsheets. Planners interact with the web app through a series of unique widgets. Esri is constantly adding new widgets to the available catalog, and our GIS team routinely explores these widgets for increased usability within the app. The cornerstone of our app is a layer we call the Zone Builder Database. This is the main editable layer that planners interact with to update their community's zoning. The Batch Attribute Editing widget is the most important widget in our app. It is used by planners to apply new and proposed zoning. While we do have a template for our various community planning apps within the city, this layer 
along with all of our widgets, are entirely customizable to the needs of each community planning area. It allows them to edit and update a record or several records at a time, essentially replacing the change matrix method that was used in the past. Using dropdowns with domains help keep everything nice and neat. The Zone Builder layer settings also help us keep track of who edited which parcels, as well as a date for reference. The Query widget allows planners to run preset queries against their data, which generates a new layer with the results, which is visible in the layer list. For example, this widget can help planners find all the lots that might have mismatched land use and zoning, something that would definitely need addressing. The plan concept layers are included in the community planning app as optional layers that can be used for a range of functions and mapping needs. Some planners use this layer to track and map various concepts related to their plan update, such as potential zoning areas, conceptual street designation changes, as well as simply leaving map notes for their teammates. The right side of our app contains a few more useful widgets. The legend widget is a list of symbolized layers that are currently turned on in our map. The layer list widget is the full list of available layers within the map. The planner can toggle the layers on and off, zoom to a layer, set transparency, and open the attributes table. This can also be used to set the drawing order of the layers. The planners can also view the layer's source, date last updated, and description by clicking on Show Item Details. The Infographic widget works in correlation with the Select widget on the left to display the total building square footage for any selected lots in an easy-to-read, informative way. The Bookmarks widget allows the creation of bookmarks for areas that the planners frequently visit. We like to remind the planners that these bookmarks can only be viewed by them personally, and that if they want to share areas or notes with their team, they should use the plan concept layers we just mentioned to draw a point, polygon, or line for their note. The base map widget allows the user to toggle between the various base maps available. And finally, the information widget, which contains links to a how-to Google document, the app's metadata, and finally, a Google form to submit a request. Infographics are a fun visual way to get information to display. Here we have one for our total building square footage based on our assessor data. We simply use the select widget on the left to select multiple parcels and our infographic dynamically displays the square footage for those selected parcels. Building square footage is one of the most requested pieces of information by the planners. This handy infographic allows them to quickly and efficiently get the information that they need. The information widget links planners with a live document that walks them through how to use their app, including in-depth steps on using specific widgets as well as what new widgets we might be adding. We are constantly updating the app with new usability features and functions, and this document serves as a guidebook for the planners. The Submit Request portion is greatly liked by the user since it lets the GIS team know how they're currently using the app and what features they might like to see in the future. Clicking on the Submit Request button takes the planner to a Google form they can fill out with their name, extension, and type of request they have a short description of the issue, and a level of priority. They also have the option of uploading a screenshot of any issue that they've encountered. Keeping an open dialog and working closely with planners allows us to customize the app experience to tailor it to their needs. A tool without any feedback from the user is only as useful as we think it is. Open communication with our planners is key. That's it for our app. I'll go ahead and pass it back to Betty. Thanks. Thank you, Laura, and thank you, Brittany. Here at the City of Los Angeles, we are continuously exploring ways to improve upon our current workflows. Using the Web App Builder allows us to configure and customize mapping tools to different needs for different planning projects across the entire department. 
Today was just one example. Currently, we have customization plans on how the app will evolve going forward, such as integrating Connect Explorer, which is an oblique imagery viewer plugin widget within the web app. We currently have an internal portal and are exploring the possibility of an external facing portal to host our customized web apps. On behalf of Los Angeles City Planning, thank you for watching and have a great rest of your virtual ESRI 2020 user conference.